Then as I, as I shared with you earlier, um, we have the ideating and prototyping. So you've got a pretty uh, good idea of who you want to um, educate, what your digital learning content should be. And you now want to take it into an actual tool. Um, and one of the, the, the best ways is doing a prototyping. Um, and, and often our intuition and our instinct is pretty spot on, but we need to test it. Um, and we need to test it in a prototype. So we ideate, we build something really simple, we give it to our, a sample of our actual stakeholders and we get feedback from them. And this, you can see, this is a, a, an iterative loop, an infinity loop. And what you do want to, to do is that feedback will determine if you're on the right path, if you've got to refine it, or if you can take it into development, or you need to look at a new idea um, and from and then try something different. Hopefully you're on the right track um, and you can um, actually take it into development. So I'm just going to give you some ideas around how you can ide ideate and some questions to consider when you're thinking about how do you put your learning into um, an actual um, tool and a package. So, so some things to consider is um, what type of your stakeholders, what do they, what are their preferences? Um, and this is a great diagram, just looking at some of the, the, the things. So some people are very much visual learners. They like infographics. They like things to be visual. Actually, a majority of people are. Um, we have people who like to do things. Um, and that's where you have practical exercises. That's maybe where you have a workshop and people do certain things in that workshop. Um, you have other people who are auditory, though this is a smaller portion. Um, what they've done in research is like that they like to hear. So they like podcasts. Um, there are people who like to, to work under, under stress. And this is where you have a challenge. Um, we use this a lot in gamification. We put a challenge, a test, and people see how they progress through that. Um, also, people like to learn sometimes when it relaxes them. So, so in certain of our, I know when we create videos, we actually have relaxing music um, for certain type of target audiences. Um, other people like to learn through through writing. Um, other people like to learn through authority. So, so maybe you reference certain material that is authoritative and and use that in in your 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 case study material. Um, and other people like it where they have direct engagement with you. So those are just some ideas of, of what to think about when you're ideating. Um, just in terms of the content type. So, so there's, there's many different content types and, and we could, this is a whole lesson on itself, but this just gives you some ideas of um, what content you could look at. And, and obviously this would also be tied into the type of learners or the type of stakeholders that you're targeting towards. So if you have, have pinpointed that you've got visual, um, your stakeholders are visual, visual and they like doing things, you could do um, infographics with an online workshop. Obviously, um, if it's in a smaller group, it might be a practical workshop. Um, you see this happening quite often where people are giving out um, business, um, business know-how or advice or consulting services where they'll have a, a free workshop where people come and they do certain things and they take certain things away with them. Um, if you have people who enjoy listening um, and they love Audible, they have a lot of Audible books, you could use podcasts and you could use interviews. Um, if, if there's more of a written inclination, there's blogs. Um, you could also do playbooks, how-to guides. Um, you could also use online platforms like Google Hangouts, webinars. Um, something that you've probably all seen or maybe even done yourself is ebooks. Ebooks giving you an understanding and a know-how. Um, so those are just some ideas, and we obviously will be, be sending out a toolkit with all of these ideas that you can, can consider when coming up with how you design your learning. Um, and we've also just done some, some mapping of this into to panels and into terms of how these different forms meet different, different needs and, and types of learners. And then this is, um, don't be too overwhelmed by, by all of this, um, but this is very helpful um, in terms of just some of the tools um, that you can use and that you can search for. So you can see that 
if you want someone to remember something, um, you can you can use Facebook for short live videos. Um, you can also use blog posts. And um, there's also quiz casts. If you want to do some more um, uh, application, what we do is we use um, Google Docs. So we give them certain activities and Google Docs collates it and we, we give the feedback of that. Um, and you'll see that there's, there's, there's multiple um, tools that can be used and multiple ways in which it can be used. And I think that's the one thing when you're designing and creating learning is that if I look at it five, 10 years ago, you had to become a coder, you had to be a Flash developer to do this. What's really nice nowadays is there's authoring tools out there, there's tools that make it very accessible. So if you're clear with what, what content, you can really find a tool that you can use pretty quickly, you can learn pretty quickly, and you can create it in that format, especially in the digital and the virtual world. So these are just some things we'll be sharing afterwards. But I mean, what I wanted to demonstrate with this slide is that it, it gives you a full range of, um, of what's out there and what can be used. Okay, great. So, so once you've done your ideation and you've got an idea of how you want to put your content out there, you design your prototype. And I think one of the, just some, some things around prototyping is it's, it's really your most basic idea um, that you have. And usually prototypes can happen on paper. Um, they can happen on very simple user interfaces. It can be a, um, a portion of a course or a piece of content or a slight, um, a portion of a, a podcast. Um, so you want to make it as simple as possible so you don't waste a lot of time and money on it. And then from this, um, you want to take this and test this with a, a sample group of your stakeholders. Um, so, so taking a couple of stakeholders, um, and we use this a lot in, in our design of learning, and especially with our, our ga gamified products, is that um, we actually make something really simple and we get people together, whether it's online or in a, in a before COVID, in an actual workshop, and we get them to test it, and we see how they use it, and we see their responses, and we give their feedback. Um, and just some tools when you're doing a prototype is understand that it's not your final product. If people give you feedback, they don't like it or it doesn't meet their need, be, be, be willing to start from scratch again. I think that's the beauty of it. You don't invest a lot of time in it. It's something that you've got to act quickly on. So when you get feedback, you can actually make changes there and there and improve it, which is, is really great. And even give it back to your sample stakeholders to give you feedback on the improvements. Um, be very clear about what you want to test in that prototype session. So what you want them, um, what questions you want them to ask. So maybe you want to ask them, is it easy to access um, this particular podcast? Did this piece of information and this content give you value? Did it meet your needs? So, so set out right up front what you want to get out of them. Um, we've had the mistake of being um, an open-ended, doing open-ended prototypes. And then we've just gone into a loop of never ending updates and iterations. So be very clear about how you want to test your particular learning. Um, and as we said before, provide clear instructions, but also observe how they, they deal with that learning. And as I said before, if it doesn't work and you're not getting the feedback you need and people don't see value, don't be scared to start again. I think that's the, the, the good thing about it is you can test many ideas and you can also be more creative and bolder because you haven't invested a huge amount of time. Um, and you might even find something that, that you never thought before. You might have never considered a podcast to share expertise uh, and you do a, a short podcast and you share it with your sample group and you might find it's a huge hit and people really see value in that. So be bold in doing that. Um, and then just use the, the correct um, tools for doing your prototype. So, so some tools may be paper-based. Maybe you want to design a quick app um, where people get to understand a little bit about how your service works. You could do that in a paper-based format or you might want to do something really simple um, in a PowerPoint presentation where you might want to do some digital learning and you put it in PowerPoint, um, and, but you give people an overview of what that content looks like. So there's very many, there's many different ways. And we'll also share with you some prototyping tools that you can do for learning design. So really um, 
I'm not going to go too much. It's very much what I've said around um, before, around when you design your prototype, what to keep in mind. Um, we've also just, when we get feedback, obviously, um, you know, be very clear about what you want. Um, some of the prototype you can keep a bit more open-ended. So also focus on what worked and if there are any other ideas coming out of that prototype. So that's really, if I go back into our into our design and develop um, uh, model is the prototyping is really to get to a place where you get feedback and you get valuable feedback and you know you're on the right track and you can actually then take that concept, that minimum viable product and you can put it out into the marketplace and you can put some more time and energy um, behind it and put it as part of either your, your content marketing strategy or part of your customer engagement um, tools. And um, so this is a, a really simple model. I don't know if there's any questions or anything else on the oh, chat dear, that I could define. Yeah, there's, there's a question from Alistair. So any basic gamifications, templates, canvases that could help us get started with, with the ideas we have You've shared a, an awesome amount of content. I guess the focus of the question is on templates or right. canvases. Mm. Yeah, so so we we're gonna we're gonna share that um, with you. There, there's plenty. I have got a, a next section on just some simple gamification techniques to start using. Um, I thought I'd just uh, give a quick break to digest all that information, <laughs> but cool. we will be sharing um, those those tools. Um, and also prototyping tools, you can do, you can use ideas around that just so that you can start building content. Awesome. Deirdre, I'm, just, I'm just watching time. Sure. <laughs> so I know, I know what's still coming because there's some exciting things coming down the line and we also need to um, allow for some questions. Thanks. Great. Great. So I'm I'm going to to end end with a, a quick um, simple game. So I thought let's start with some just really easy way of once you've got your content and once you want to engage, is how do you make that content more engaging um, for your for your your stakeholders? And um, these are just three um, really effective simple techniques to to put in place, and and we we've done it. Um, and the first idea is if you have um, uh, assessment or you want to get some feedback from people, um, do it in a fun way with a quiz um, and with a leaderboard. Um, so, so there's a, um, what's really nice, it breaks up content and learning. Uh, most people have got limited time frames. I mean, they say the average person nowadays has 24 minutes of doing focused learning. So you've only got 24 minutes and that probably is less when they are in a, in a marketing or, or they haven't actually signed up for a course. Um, so quizzes are a great way and people always want to know more about what's, what they know and what they don't know. And there's a really uh, um, free uh, tool that you can use, which is called quizlet.com. We'll send that out and you can de design quizzes on here. You can also publish them in an online format. So that's one technique to use um, to really um, make it more engaging. Um, there's another a great way is um, through a program, it's called openbadges.org. Um, and what open badges is it gives people, people really enjoy recognition. Um, and open badges is you can go into the site, um, it's developed by Mozilla. Um, and, and when someone does a piece of content, they can actually get an open badge. You obviously have to register that content um, and it depends on the quality, the quantity, the depth, all of that. It's an open framework. So you'll see that um, it's used, badges are used quite a bit in social media as a form of gamification. So you get your top, your top supporter gets a badge for that. Um, people still really enjoy um, recognition. Um, what's really nice, if it is something substantial, is that you can um, use that badge for recognition. 
Um, so I've actually given you the site where you can go and investigate it further called openbadges.org. Um, and then the other idea is you can create levels of progression. Um, so, you know, if someone wants to know more or you, you're engaging with a customer, you, as we spoke about earlier, there's different levels from a level one, which is simple recall of facts to application to more um, being able to solve problems with your knowledge. Um, it's a great way of creating levels and progression levels. Um, you can link your badges to this as well. Um, it also makes people feel like they're, they're accomplishing progression through that. Um, we've given you a link um, to um, a taxonomy where you can actually cluster your content um, in different phases or different levels. Um, and then it's how you actually communicate that level and how you communicate that progression. So that's, that's just three really simple ways of, of adding elements of gamification. We'll give you um, in, our, in our handout, there'll be, a, there'll be a couple of more other ideas that you can apply to that. But obviously from a time point of view, I just wanted to share those three. Great, so Liesl, I'm, I'm going to hand over to, to you. Yeah, I think, thank you. I think it's more handing over to Craig because he's moderating today. <laughs> so no, yeah, I think, I think um, uh, it would be a good time to go into uh, your uh, Q&A now, Craig. Right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. So Everybody anybody, if you have else. a question, pop up. Uh, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and uh, speak to the community yeah. and ask the address questions. Guy's asking about the handout. It'll be it'll be emailed, Guy. And to everybody that's attended, the handouts and the presentation will be emailed. And the and the and the video recording. Mm. Anybody and, else and, got um, a question? Sorry, Dedo, after you. So, so on our website, gametochange.com, we have in our blog post, we have many articles and we have many toolkits. On, on some ideas of how to apply the gamification to that. Um, so those are all free resources that you can download um, and you can look at um, and see if there's anything applicable. Cool. Any questions? Any, anybody else got questions? I think while we wait for people to ask, Deirdre, um, we, we know what the role of in engagement can play in terms of your your external uh, focus of the organization um, but but it's specifically with regards to using it internally as well have you had customers where you used a tool like gamification for for engagement with employees in organizations yes so so Liesl, we've um what we've done is um, we've had clients who've obviously wanted to to do product um, product um, launches, um, and you know everyone is tired of um, just getting content. Um, everyone is saturated with learning uh, more information. And what we've done is we've done um, quiz based um, gamified products. So this is a very simple. Uh, um, quiz-based game. We use this as part of um, an actual webinar. Um, so we found that now doing webinars, um, it's, it's a lot harder to engage. So you've got to bring different elements in. Um, this is um, very much agile. You can, you can put this together really quickly. Um, you don't need to be a tech expert. Um, it's got music. Um, you, you'd put in your your name, it works off a link. Um, it obviously uses timing. It gives you points as you go along. So I'm gonna do a couple that's incorrect. I can't remember this. 
Now this is super cool. I mean, what we've found is one of the most positive uh, elements of feedback that we've had in our workshops is the the, the uh, collaborative engagement conversational style that we've approached rather than just a talking head and this kind of thing encourages that even more it's super cool definitely and I, I think why i wanted to bring it is it's um it's very simple it's easy to to use um you don't have to be an expert um but you can really bring in the nice thing is that you can bring in these really highly engaging tools so we have a um, and just from a time, um, uh, we, we've got more complex games where you actually have decision making that takes a little bit longer and it's not ideal to demo. Um, but we've got templates and tools that, that people can take and we can actually reskin and put content in it. So it just makes your content more live. It makes the learning more impactful and it makes the engagement more impactful. So those are just um, some examples of, of, of what can be done. And um, we'll be sending out the toolkit so it'll give you all the links. Um, I mean, this is just to trigger some thinking around how you can take learning and, and create digital learning with gamification and really use it to supplement what you're offering to the market.